I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1734 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about Chuck Henry, a Vietnam veteran who made a liar out of every one of those jackass anti-war protesters who called the returning Vietnam veterans all sorts of names and in some cases expectorated upon them. It was a terrible thing to come home to if you were a Vietnam veteran. Despite the rude welcome home experience many went through, the vast majority of Vietnam veterans went on to disprove everything those anti-war protesters were saying about the returning veterans. They continued to serve their country at home after their service to their country in Vietnam. Chuck Henry recently passed away on April the 29th of 2020. I am going to share his obituary with you just to illustrate the life that he led and what a great American he is and how he contributed to the greatness of this country. His life is a great example to us all. That's why I'm going to share it. His obituary appeared in the Citizen newspaper there in Peachtree City. Peachtree City is a beautiful place a little bit southwest of Atlanta, Georgia, not too far from the Atlanta Speedway over there in Griffin, Georgia. The title of his obituary is Charles Henry Quick, 76, of Peachtree City. It was provided by the staff at The Citizen. Let's take a look at this obituary so that you will understand the great example that Charles Henry Quick was to us all. Dateline, Peachtree City, Georgia. Charles Henry Quick was born in St. Paul, Minnesota on December the 24th, 1943 and died on April the 29th, 2020. He is survived by his loving wife, Kathleen Mary Quick, Nee McGowan, three sons, Brian, Michael, and David, and his grandchildren, Bren and Charlie Quick, and Porter and Ireland Quick. He was also loved by many nieces, nephews, and cousins. Chuck enlisted in the Navy in 1966 during the Vietnam War. He served as a sonar man while he and his shipmates patrolled waters in the Mekong Delta in the Brownwater Navy. After honorary discharge in 1968, he remained in the reserves for two more years. Chuck worked as a printer for West Publishing in St. Paul before his service. He enjoyed reading law books during his breaks. Post-Navy, he went back to printing while attending Controlled Data Institute on the GI Bill. After technical school, he was hired by Controlled Data in Minnesota, where he excelled as a computer hardware engineer. He appreciated the chance to work as a pioneer during the beginning of the supercomputer era, his career offered him the opportunity to travel to many interesting places. After many years with control data, he transferred his family to Peachtree City, Georgia, in order to work for Cray Research. He experienced drastic changes in the computer industry during his 36-year career. When he left Cray Research, he shared his computer skills with the Fayette County School System for five years before he officially retired. Chuck always felt that his life's biggest accomplishment was becoming a father. He raised three sons who he was very proud of, in spite of some memorable nerve-wracking moments during growing up. He also often remembered to tell his wife that marrying her was his life's best decision. Chuck and his wife Kathy were blessed to be heading to their 50th anniversary this August the 15th. The frosting on the cake in Chuck's life was his luck to be able to enjoy his four beautiful grandchildren. 
although Chuck tended to be a C and E churchgoer, whatever that is, he was a strong believer in the power and need of faith. He was a very generous and thoughtful man. He contributed many hours of volunteer time during each phase of his life. His wife's challenge to his sons is that they will continue to honor their dad by emulating his value of integrity. Occasionally, Chuck would buy a lottery ticket. However, he felt that he already won the lottery by being born in the USA, belonging to a loving family, relishing his career, treasuring his long-term marriage 95% of the time, and watching his babies become men. At 76 years of age, he felt blessed. He will be laid to rest in Minnesota at the Fort Snelling National Cemetery next to his first baby, Charles Joseph Quick, and near his parents, Olga and Henry Quick. A celebration of life will be at a later date. Chuck's passing was rather sudden, but his legacy to his family will be never-ending. May he be at rest with the angels. That is a tribute to a tremendous Vietnam veteran, Chuck Quick. He not only served his country in Vietnam, but he came home and continued serving his country in helping to launch the computer era. After he retired, showing what an outstanding person he was, he helped the Fayette County School System with their computers for five years. He didn't have to do that. He did it on his own because he is a tremendous American and Vietnam veteran. Charles Henry Quick, I hereby issue you a Vietnam veteran podcast salute for your service to your country. Rest in peace. This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1734 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more of these stories coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News. How about that? Ain't that a mess?